Hello, I'm Bernard Hickey from interest.co.nz and welcome to interest.co.nz and to policy.net.nz where we're interviewing the leaders of the political parties and the finance spokespeople ahead of the election. Today we've spoken to Rodney Hyde, the MP for Epsom, the leader of ACT, and I asked him what can be done about public infrastructure for a government. Just um, finally, one other question, which was um, the. Just a oh, I know, I know. So no, no, we're, we're about. about to... So big. <laughs> on... So much policy there. I know, there is. We haven't begun to cover red tape, and that's my, one of my big things. Yeah, just, just one thing um, infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, some people think government's role is to um, uh, build infrastructure, in that there are lots of public benefits that you can't capture through a private system um, if you if you build particularly public network style uh, infrastructure. And the issue of broadband and roads and um, other power n networks are uh, hot at the moment. Um, how how would an act uh, government deal with um, building? public network style infrastructure? Hmm. Um, we tend to label, um, I notice the bloggers all think that um, broadband is a public good. Um, they're wrong. But we tend to label whatever we want a public good and then say someone else should pay for it. So the list of public goods has expanded dramatically since Adam Smith's day. That's for sure. Um, but I think there is basic infrastructure that we're sorely let down on, like you know, transport. And um, I also think there's a great opportunity for the private sector to be involved and, uh, and to be providing that, and we should be facilitating that. Um, but I don't shy away from the fact that uh, even, um, in, in, even in my ideal society, there would be basic infrastructure being assured and provided for by the state, not necessarily building it. So what about the roads? What about the roads, for example, um, where people drive on the on the roads? You want a free and open system. You don't want to pay a toll every time you drive onto any bit bit and piece of road. Um, uh, surely that's a public piece of network infrastructure that should be provided free and the cost spread around everyone. Not obviously to me, funnily enough, because when you look at the technology, you could imagine seamlessly paying tolls uh, in the future. And if it means a difference between having a road and not having a road, you know, I think a lot of people would pay the toll. And so, yes, we've got a roading network, but it's massively underinvested in. And if there are opportunities for a toll road and a, and a road um, provided through tolls, then I think we should grab it. And um, so it's not obvious to me that you would be... I mean, we're not thinking necessarily in the future of tolls that you pay, you know, your $2 to the guy in the booth. Um, the potential for charging for the use of networks such as roads um, with technology is changing quite dramatically. I think we should be open to that possibility. When you look at the problem of congestion, um, then pricing is an obvious um, response. And of course it's good green policy too. It gets the incentives right uh, in terms of the behaviour. What about um, power infrastructure, electricity, which is... Um caused some problems over the winter and um, we've just had contact uh, and, and others announced big increases in power prices. W what's your view on how the power system should be organised? Again, I'm not an expert on power so I can't tell you this particular station here and that particular station here. So I tend to sort of take a helicopter view of the policy and um, when I see things being rationed and, and things spiking in terms of prices like that, I tend to think of, hmm, there must be government in there because you don't normally get it. And uh, the government is such a large player in the electricity market in terms of a provider um, and transpower, and then as a regulator, um, it tends to overdo it and think it can direct it and makes it worse. Uh, and it wouldn't be a bad st place to start is to back off a little bit and provide for better investment um, into our energy sector. And of course we have a government that's saying you can't have this sort of investment uh, energy production, you can't have that sort of energy production, you can't have thermal stations, so on and so forth, which is hugely limiting our opportunities to provide the power that we need to, to drive our economy into the future. 
Just one, one final question, and this is more a philosophical one. Uh, we sit. Fred. <laughs> oh, all right. Good. Sorry, I, I thought you were still talking about the um, fiscal responsibility. So, 